Here are five reasons why you might consider getting two table saws in your shop. First, a second table saw doesn't need to be expensive. I picked this one up for $100 on the local marketplace and it's far from perfect, but as a secondary option, it's exactly what I need. Second, sometimes you have a saw set up for a single task, but you need to transition to a secondary task and then back to the first, and it's a pain to constantly switch out settings and redial your saw every time you have to do an operation. So this way, I can set up one to do ripping operations and another one to cut at angles. This also means that I don't have to switch out blades as often. I might set this one up with a ripping blade and the other one up with a cross-cutting blade, or I can set one up with a dado stack and the other one with a combination blade, and then I don't have to switch it for the rest of the project. Another great thing about having a second saw in the shop is that if one breaks down, I still have a backup ready to go right now. And the last and most important reason to get a second table saw in the shop is the internet cloud. That's right, if you get a second table saw in your shop, you will be the popular kid on the block. This new table saw that I picked up had this really stupid cart with it. So I decided that what I needed to do was to set up a single cabinet that could house both of my table saws. And what that would do would allow me to have both of my table saws on a single surface that could be pushed around my shop. I decided the first thing I needed to do was to cut out all of my panels for the cabinet. And then I could come back and drill all of the pocket holes for the majority of the joinery. Now the second table saw that I'm setting into this cabinet is incredibly heavy and so it needs something incredibly sturdy to rest on. So I decided to cut that joint with a dado but everything else is going to be pocket holes. And the back piece behind the first table saw needs to have a cutout made for the motor. Once I had all the pieces cut out I could start assembling all the panels. Now I've never done cabinets before and so I was treating this sort of as a learning experience which is why I'm making everything out of construction grade materials. If you're ever going to be building cabinets like this, you have to remember that everything needs to be as square as you can possibly get it. There was a lot of fiddling I had to do because I didn't get these square the first time, but eventually the whole cabinet did end up square. You can avoid all those issues by just making doubly sure that everything is square as you're screwing it in. I decided I wanted to do a 2x4 lattice structure for the base of the cabinet to sit on, and that meant to get it to the right height, I needed to do these half laps on the end of the 2x4s. To put these together, I just used a bunch of glue and then some brad nails to hold it in place temporarily. I also glued this 1x4 in the middle of the 2x4 framing to act as a little bit of extra support. This would have been a 2x4 as well if I had one, but I ran out of them. And a 1x4 should do well enough to hold the center of the cabinet. I decided to use six of these locking casters for the cabinet because I was a little worried that it was going to sag in the middle. I designed this so that each of the casters was going to overlay over a joint, then I could just use extra long screws to hold the joint together, as well as hold the caster in place. I was really happy with the way this went. At this point, I needed to get the cabinet off of the workbench so I could do the rest of the work on the ground. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when I said that one of the reasons I built my winch was so that I could get large, heavy objects off of my workbench? Well, check this out. <laughs> okay. Once I got the cabinet centered over the base, I could just throw a few screws in. I think I only used four screws to attach the entire thing. It really doesn't need much. And I was really happy with how sturdy everything ended up. Now this old table saw that I have was actually given to me by my grandpa a couple of years ago. And it came with this custom cabinet that he built. There was absolutely no way I was going to be getting rid of this cabinet, so I decided to integrate it into the new cabinet instead. The first thing I needed to do was to remove all of the casters off the bottom of this cabinet. But there were also these wooden risers on the bottom as well, and I was trying to take those off. But it turns out that what he did was to glue one board onto the bottom and screw it in place with four screws, and then put another board over those screws and glue that in place with four more screws, and then bolt the casters on with four more screws on top of that. That means there was 12 screws per riser. Grandpa, I love you, but what the heck were you thinking? I did eventually get them all off, and they looked pretty good when they were done. And no, I did not forget about the drawers when I tilted it forward, just like when I tilted it back. I think that was intentional. Now that the cabinet is assembled, I could do more proper measuring and figure out exactly what height I needed to cut out this recess for the back bar for the table saw fence. And I was able to cut that out pretty easily with the oscillating tool. I really need to get some new blades for that. But once I cut all that out, everything fit in beautifully. Hello, 
I needed the old cabinet and the new cabinet to match up as seamlessly as possible. So Ellie and I spent a little bit of time clamping everything into place. She did a fantastic job holding the clamps while I put pressure on the other side. We did it! We did it! Good job! Hooray! Oh, high five! And then while the clamps are in place, I can go through and level everything. I basically just went through and put shims everywhere. I had a low spot and was able to get it nice and level, but also in plane with the countertops. And then I can go through and screw this down from all three sides, and I think I only used like four screws on this. It really didn't need much. Now for the second saw, I needed an opening so that the sawdust would fall to the chamber below. What I decided to do was to add a piece just with glue and brad nails to the front of this cabinet. Then I could use that as well as the supports of the cabinet as a reference for a flush trim bit and cut the whole square into the shell. Forever! You can't be in there forever. Yes. Get out of the hole! What are you doing? No. Look out! I needed to bolt the table saw down to the shelf of the cabinet. And to make sure everything was level like the other side, I decided to use these washers as a spacer. This ended up working out really well. And then I could start running the cables for all the power. There's a surprising number of power cords to run when you're doing something like this. So I ended up adding this really interesting power strip that has a bunch of these plugins on it. And the cool thing about this is I can always add more power tools here in the future. Possibly even battery storage. So I apparently lost the footage where I glued the countertops to the plywood. But it was just a contact cement application and I think a lot of us have seen that before so it's not that big of a loss. By this point everything had been cut to approximate size and so I just had to notch out a few sections and cut things to final dimensions so that I could fit them onto the cabinet. And I also decided I wanted to do all of my edging with this solid maple. These maple boards were something that I already had from a previous project, and so they worked out just fine for this project. I also wanted to add something to the edge of the plywood that would take at least the next 10 years of abuse. All of the edging just got glued and pin nailed into place, and then the countertops could be screwed into the base of the cabinet using the pocket holes drilled earlier. I had a little bit of space on the left side of the second saw for a little bit more of the cabinet material. And so I needed to make a choice whether I was going to make more bracing for the cabinet to sit on, or make something that could bolt to the left side of the saw. I ended up putting these supports on the side, but this gets rid of a little bit of my storage space, and I'm not sure if I like it. I might change that in the future. I'm going to be putting pretty deep grooves in the countertop material, so I had to double up the material on the bottom so that I didn't go through too far and make the countertop too weak. So I decided to glue and screw a piece to the bottom of the cabinet in the open space. Ideally, what I should have done is make the countertop just doubly thick, but this ended up working out just fine. I did the same thing to the countertop on the right. Now anytime you make an outfeed table for a table saw, you need to remember to account for the miter slots. If you plan to use any sleds on the saw, then you have to cut grooves in the outfeed table as well. They don't need to act as guides as much as the saw does, but just a little bit of a relief so that you're not bumping into the outfeed table. And then the last step is to cover up all the edges of all of the plywood with this pine edging. It's very similar to what I did with the countertops, but it's just going to be pine boards. Now at some point, I do want to come back and do cabinet doors on this, but for right now, I'm completely over this project. Definitely let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you would have done differently. I'm not used to doing cabinet work, and so this was the best that I could do with what I know. And personally, I think it turned out beautiful, and I know I'm going to be getting a lot of use out of this. So let me know what you think. Thank you all for watching. Catch you all next time.